Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Fedora CoreOS talk. Uh, I'm Sini, and uh, I am working in I'm working in Fedora CoreOS, um, and I'm I am uh, contributing to Fedora from like maybe four years or something like that. And uh, yeah, uh, Jakub. And my name is Jakub. Uh, I'm software engineer in uh, Fedora Multi Arch team at Red Hat. Uh, I'm contributing to Fedora since I started at Red Hat like five years ago. Uh, and you will see how my work uh, work fits into the Fedora Core OS. Okay, uh, so uh, f can, can you tell me how many of you have already used or uh, know about Fedora Core OS, uh, some context? Uh, can you raise your hand if you know about Fedora Core OS? Okay. Okay, then yeah, uh, I think we'll give some introduction and uh, we'll proceed with the talk. So here's the agenda for today's talk. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So what is Fedora Core OS? It's, um, it's an operating system and it's, uh, it automatically updates and uh, it's a minimal operating system for running containerized, uh, uh, containerized applications. And uh, uh, it, it, its aim is to run the container workloads uh, securely and at scale. Um, you can you can run the operating system in in the cluster, or it's also good, works well in the standalone. So yeah, it depends upon what kind of use case you want to use it. Also, it's a new Fedora edition, so uh, it it like it has all the all the underlying things is RPM. So and it's coming from the Fedora Fedora RPM, which you have all signed and uh, everything is tr from the trusted place. We are not using anything additionally here. Also, it is a, it is upstream for RHEL CoreOS, uh, but it, with broader scope uh, because RHEL CoreOS is mostly right now in the OpenShift, uh, but Fedora CoreOS can be run standalone or with other use cases. So a little bit of history about uh, the Fedora CoreOS. Um, so we have a Fedora Atomic Host, uh, which is uh, currently getting released now as well with two weeks of release. And uh, there is Container Linux uh, from CoreOS. Uh, this came from, I mean, after the acquisition, these two were together here. And uh, we were like, um, we have two awesome distribution, which is both have common goal, running containers. And uh, we really want to have something even better. Like, it's better to use both and get something new. Uh, which has uh, better benefits and all the awesomeness from both of them. Uh, so here we are with the Fedora Core OS, uh, a new new edition within Fedora. So it, it's like uh, we are have used, we are trying to get this from like last year, uh, this Fedora Core OS, and it's taking time because uh, we are maintaining Fedora Atomic Host and as well as we are maintaining Container Linux. We have users for both. And uh, we want to maintain them, and we want to develop something new, uh, including both. So we have a lot of design, design decision to do what we want and what is best for the new operating system. So yeah, we, we are here with the new operating system with the awesomeness of both of them features. Uh, so uh, if you already know about RPM OS3 or OS3, uh, it, it also uses the same technology in underlying. It has uh, OS3 and RPM OS3 on top of it. Uh, so we have immutable host, uh, which means that slash USR is read-only read -only file system. Uh, so like if you have used silver blue or Fedora atomic host, you already know that, uh, f uh, know that the slash USR is read-only mounted. Uh, so you, really you can't change there anything, uh, which, ke which keeps the host immutable. Also, <laughs> It uses uh, RPM OS3, which gives the features of uh, uh, automatic uh, update and rollback. We'll get to know more about the uh, updates mechanism later on. But here, we, yeah, we have atomic update, which means that uh, the entire operating system receives the update uh, together in one transaction. Uh, so if you know about uh, Git, uh, it's, it, uh, it follows the same mechanism, similar kind of functionality, like everything in your entire OS is kind of uh, 
kind of compose together and it forms a single commit. So everything can be tracked here and if, if, it, if whenever a new update happens, it's like a single transaction update. And if something goes wrong, um, we have a very nice feature rollback, uh, which you can use to go back to the previous working system. And everything is tracked, so it's really easy. And, and uh, Fedora Core OS have uh, Ignition, so Ignition uh, uses uh, Ignition config. Um, so during the first boot, uh, Ignition runs the Ignition config, and it it configures the system. Uh, and basic uh, basic things like user creation, um, uh, the 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 system partitioning, or anything you want to do, or if you want to add something, you system the unit, you can add it. The, in the ignition config and uh, system will take care of during the first boot. So what happens is um, you, you either get a working system when you use ignition uh, during the provisioning. So whenever your system runs, you, your ignition runs successfully, then you have a working system. Otherwise, your system is not running. So yeah, it's not, it doesn't leave you in between intermediate state like it's not working half of the thing. So, yeah, unless everything is working fine, uh, uh, it won't give you a working system. So that ignition really helps a lot here. Uh, and it only runs on the first boot. Okay. And uh, it provides you immutable infrastructure. So what we mean here is, um, in Fedora Core OS, what we want is um, you don't change anything here on the host. Uh, let us manage, uh, let, the, let us manage everything uh, to update and uh, you where you only have to run your application there on, on the host inside container. So everything will be running smoothly and we'll take care of the host, updating it with all the security fixes, etc. Uh, so uh, suppose um, you want to add something in, uh, change something in the configuration in any of the ETC file, uh, because yeah, it's uh, the OS2 based system, ETC, you can change things and slash var is also like writable. So if you want some change something, please don't do it here. Uh, the recommended way is uh, add something into the uh, config and uh, provision a new system uh, with the updated config and discard the old one. That's how you maintain the infrastructure immutable. Like you're not changing anything. Uh, it's the same thing um, with whatever you have provisioned in the beginning. Also it provides provides you rolling release. Uh, rolling release is like very interesting. It, it came from, I'd say, container Linux. Uh, they have uh, different channels called alpha, beta, and stable. Here we are using um, rolling release thing. Uh, we have different streams. So like uh, if you are in, there is a single ref, uh, which we call in OS3 way, or if you are using Git, you call it branch. Uh, so yeah, the, you have a single branch, and uh, you will continue receiving uh, the update there for the entire lifetime of the that particular system. We'll get to know more in detail in future slides. Also, uh, Fedora Core OS uh, has no Python on the host. Um, uh, we we are able to get it get it after some effort and discussion on the community channel how we want to get. Get get all the benefits and still remove Python because we are Python is in a lot of things. So we really worked with the maintainers and they were really friendly and uh, uh, we were able to what we were able to do sub packaging and uh, get whatever we wanted in the host and in without Python and whatever was Python there uh, it was moved to either another sub package or we figured out we'll remove that from the base and uh, we'll try to get that functionality from the container. So yeah, we have no Python on the host. Also, uh, since it's a minimal operating system and uh, it gives you containerized workflow, um, we have all the container tools available in the host, uh, like Podman and Mobi, which gives you Docker. Uh, so they are pre-installed, so you can try uh, whatever you want, but yeah, Podman is the preferred way, I would say. Yeah, okay, so release stream. Let's talk uh, in detail what the release streams is. Uh, this is a new thing, uh, I'd say, at least in the Fedora side, because I haven't seen these in Fedora so far. So we have multiple streams here in Fedora Core OS. 
Um, so we have categorized uh, it into three. Uh, first is production. So there are three, um, three refs in production, three refs, you say, three streams, you say, or you th three branches, whatever you can say. Like if you have used Atomic Host or uh, Silver Blue, you would have seen there is a ref when you do RPM OS3 status. Uh, there is a thing called x 64 slash 30 and something like that, which keeps changing every time you update to a new version. Like if it's a 31 base, then the ref will change and you will have to rebase your system to the new, newer ref if you want to update your system uh, based on the latest release. So here we have, we have these only streams and uh, it will receive the update uh, for the entire lifetime. So one is testing. Uh, so what testing uh, tracks is uh, the current Fedora release. For example, we have currently Fedora 30, so uh, there will be Fedora 30 content and the body updates uh, which we have uh, in the Fedora 30 and any additional fixes. Like if we're not able to get something uh, in the current release uh, and we want to get it as soon as possible, then we try to get that additional fixes in the testing. And then stable branch. So stable is basically a promotion of testing because we want we don't want to add any regression there. So so testing is already like people are trying out from few few days or something like that. So we know that these are working fine. So it's like it gives you extra stability and uh, uh, the testing after a few day, days of baking it goes to the stable release uh, with any additional fixes, if uh, any end moment fixes comes out, then it will definitely go to the stable stream. And then there's a the next stream. So next is for tracking the new upcoming features. Uh, so Fedora has like, uh, uh, right now Fedora 31 upcoming. So next should track Fedora 31 after the body, uh, the branching happens and body updates is enabled. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's of not much use because we don't have any next coming, so it will be mostly testing, you can say. And uh, yeah, this, these are the three, three uh, streams uh, which is like uh, recommended to run in production. And, and the recommended way is to have some of, the, some of your nodes on uh, testing, some of the nodes on next, and some and majority on, on the stable, because yeah, that's the stable and, uh, and the, why testing? Uh, because uh, you can get and see the regression coming in your system, if any, in advance, and you can notify us. And yeah, you don't want your all entire nodes or cluster getting down. So that's the recommended way: have some on testing, some on next, and remaining on the on the stable release. And uh, yeah, uh, the. Source of the packages coming here is are from CoreOS pool repo. So what we have here is um, uh, we are whatever packages are coming in the Fedora CoreOS, we want to keep track of everything. So we have a new tags created by Relange, uh, which is called CoreOS uh, pool, and uh, all those packages goes there, and we have a big giant repo there and everything comes from there. So the reason of doing this is um, we want to keep, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we can rebuild anything we want in future. Uh, like uh, suppose something was done two days back and if there is a new body updates, the package will get updated and you will never be able to get the same, same compose or anything uh, using the current version. So what we have here is in CoreOS pool, we, we have a log file mechanism uh, which will help you to, which we keep track of in which version, uh, which all packages with NVR has been there. So that's how you can reproduce your build and uh, it helps in testing or any other things. And these are the development streams, um, testing devil and next devil. So testing devil is the nightly snapshot of current Fedora release, uh, which will be 30, and the body updates. And periodically, it gets snapshotted to the testing stream. So the testing, what we have in the testing production testing stream, uh, that comes from the testing devil. And next devil is for, uh, the, for tracking the next, uh, next thing. So whatever comes in next, it will get snapshotted from the next devil. 
and it, it contains yeah, the, the upcoming Fedora release, uh, which will be Fedora 31 in this case. And uh, this is not recommended for production use. Um, you, this is mainly for testing or anything, low, developer, developer testing or something, if we want, or mostly things will be running in the CI, so you, we catch uh, any regression in advance and bef before getting anything into the testing. Uh, also, the source of the packages are in CoreOS pool uh, here. And these are few refs which we call branches or streams we call as mechanical streams. Uh, these are branched body updates, uh, body update testing, and rawhide. Uh, we try to keep the name uh, similar to what we have in Fedora so that people don't get confused. So branched is uh, the, the next upcoming, uh, upcoming Fedora, which is like once it gets branched, like after, after some time when a stable version release, we branch from Rawhide. So that time the branched will be in use and that will contain the nightly snapshot of the, of the packages which are in, in the in the branched. And uh, body updates is like nightly snapshot of current Fedora release, body updates uh, included, and yeah, similarly, body update testings are in, which includes current release, body updates, and body update testing. So the reason is uh, to have these refs so that uh, we keep at least CI for everything checks. So we can easily go back and see when something goes wrong. And if you want to test something new coming in Fedora, we can quickly uh, have VM or instance launched from these and uh, check it out there uh, rather than realizing later and getting sad that, OK, these things came into the production or testing and uh, people are going crazy because things are broken. And we want to keep everything in rolling release. So we really want the system to be stable. So yeah, these are all the things are hopefully like extra precaution taking and everything to keep things stable here. And these are also not for production use. So for production, you only use the refs which are mentioned in the production section, which is testing stable and next, and majority on the stable. Also, the, the source packages are here directly from the Fedora repos. So whatever you have, we have in the Fedora repos, the current one is, is just using directly that, nothing else. OK, so now we talked some components which we use in Fedora Core. Some of them are already available in the Fedora Core uh, host itself, and some are like we use to develop the Fedora Core itself. So for example, Core OS Assembler, uh, this is the building tool uh, which is uh, responsible uh, for creating all kinds of image artifacts which we have in Fedora Core OS. For example, ISO uh, QCOW2 or uh, OpenStack image or, uh, uh, or AWS uh, image, anything we want to develop, everything is uh, coming from CoreOS Assembler. There is a single tool, which is really easy to develop also because you can quickly and easily run in your system. It's really very easy. Just uh, you can go to the GitHub page and follow the documentation. It's, it's really very easy. And RPM OS3 yeah, is the heart. Uh, it's like it used to get compose the compose the uh, compose the Oster repo for the Fedora Core S. Also, it's responsible for updating the system, rollbacking everything, is done through the RPM OS tree. And then ignition, uh, which is for initial configuration of the system during the first boot. Um, so it runs during the initial MFS uh, during the whenever the system first boot, and once the initial config run, uh, everything gets updated, and then it switches to the real root system. And we have mental. Mental is for running tests. Like uh, it has a subcomponent called Cola, which runs the, uh, which launches the in the AWS or other stuff uh, images, and it tests really quickly things. And uh, it also do the religious stuff, uploading to the different cloud providers. So that's really pretty cool uh, application as well. And Zincati. Uh, Zincati is a really new tool. Um, it has been developed uh, recently uh, for, uh, for coordinating the automatic updating. So it's, it, it is in the client, uh, which, which listens to the Cincinnati, uh, another tool. And if it sees there is a new update, uh, it uh, says to RPM OS3 to update the system and then reboot it. 
so, and I think if system doesn't boot fine, then it will automatically roll back to the previous version. And there is an FCCT, um, so this is called Fedora Chorus Config Transpiler. Uh, this is also a new, a new I'd say, in, in Fedora. Uh, it's from Container Linux. Um, uh, they, they were using, like, we, ha we don't directly write ignition config because that is in JSON. We provide something uh, a bit more human uh, readable format called YAML. So, and so we write YAML config and FCCT. What it does is it converts it into ignition config. And on top of it, it also checks whether your config is right or not. If something is, if the config is, doesn't look good, then it will throw you error and it will, fi it will fix, then you fix it and then you get a new, a new config written and then convert it to ignition config. So that, that's because it's really important uh, because ignition config runs on the ones and uh, it it helps it, it provisions the system so that needs to be in the correct format so FCCT really helps a bit so it's recommended don't try ignition config yourself use FCCT tool and, uh, and which uh, which uh, where you write a Fedora Core S config. Okay, so. Since we're talking, uh, you can see how Fedora color config look. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a YAML syntax where right now it's 1.0.0, so that's the version defined. And this, these are the syntax, uh, like here is the name of the uh, user which we're creating and the password hash. Uh, this is a salt password which we create whatever you want to give. And then SSH uh, keys which you want to add which all groups. This is a simple FCC config file. Uh, there are a lot of lot more things you can add there, like systemd unit and, and the file system configuration, something like that, so that you can check uh, the whole things on the ignition or uh, the FCC um, documentation page. And to run this tool, you simply do, uh, do the FCCT, this command, you run it, and it converts you into the, into the ignition config. Uh, the last command written there. Okay, and uh, there is a really very interesting, which was uh, very very recently we were able to do that, uh, and it's really important the auto update thing. Uh, so really, uh, I really enjoyed it because it, it it was done recently by Luca. He's sitting here, and uh, what it does is it's it it. Uh, auto update your system and in a rollout way. So what happens, you can, s if you see this file, um, it says updates and there are some barriers so, and dead ends. So what happens that since it's a rolling release um, and automatic updating system, uh, it happens that uh, there is a user can be on any of, any of the previous version nodes or anything. So suppose so it, can happen that sometimes uh, your system is on updated system and uh, due to some reason uh, that particular version was not good or something like that, uh, then we would like, or, or any other issue. So they, we want users to not update from that system to another. That's kind of a bad kind of uh, version. Uh, so that we call dead end because it ends there. Uh, so we keep track of those kind of version here. Uh, for example, recently when we did uh, the release of uh, Fedora Core OS, uh, this particular version, which was 30.2019.716.1, uh, there were some issues related to RPM OS3, and because of which uh, we are not able to auto update. Uh, so we kept it in the dead end section here. And this is the most interesting thing rollout. So, what happens is uh, uh, there is a rollout period uh, um, defined in which all the nodes uh, which is available in the internet, uh, they will receive the updates. Uh, so we define here a version number, uh, so which is the latest version which we are going to release, so, uh, so that the system should be updated to that particular version. And this is start epoch, so the time uh, at which the rollout will start. And then start value, so this is the percentage which is zero the beginning and the duration, which is 120 in minutes. So 
what happens is in one to in two hours all the system will be updated to the latest version automatically using zingati or rpm os tree which is on their host so so the update will start from 0.0, .0 and uh, and the percentage keeps increasing uh, as the time goes on and at the end of two hours uh, from the start time, which is mentioned in the start epoch, the, all the system will automatically update it to the latest one. And suppose something goes wrong, then we also have feature to pause the rollout and do the fixes, and we can roll out a new release. That's really interesting here. Yeah. Okay, now I'll hand it to Yaku. So currently, uh, you can get uh, CoreOS only for 64-bit Intel. It targets. Uh, uh, bare metal bare metal environments so your server your and and other boxes it targets uh, uh, like the mainstream uh, virtualization environments uh, PMU VMware OpenStack and VirtualBox you can also run CoreOS on on like the mainstream uh, cloud providers like AWS Azure DigitalOcean on Google uh, uh, and the packet uh, here comes the, uh, my work. Uh, currently, it's just the 64-bit Intel, but uh, but uh, I'm looking into into way with help of others in CoreOS uh, to get uh, Fedora or other 64-bit uh, Fedora architectures like 64-bit ARM, uh, PowerPC, Little NDN, and 64-bit mainframe. Uh, Currently, uh, currently, I'm looking in direction of uh, bare metal, OpenStack, and QMU, uh, basically uh, virtualization and and the, and the bare, bare boxes. Uh, I haven't looked into the direction of the cloud providers. Uh, I think it's really open questions. Uh, if if there are some that would be interested in that. Uh, current state of core for the multi arch, it's actually building and running, but just locally. We do not have we do not have uh, infrastructure that currently the Intel uh, Intel version has, and as as the whole CoreOS is built or Fedora CoreOS is built on top of Fedora, uh, we could leverage a lot of work that uh, CoreOS folks did and that was done in Fedora. Uh, so so it was fairly straightforward uh, to fix the individual issues, and really big thanks to to the community and and CoreOS. And for our core S folks. So currently, uh, currently, the next big goal is to set up uh, set up build pipeline similar to the Intel one. We'll probably need OSBS and the rest of the rest of the bits, rest of the bits uh, as a, as OpenShift cluster that's that's used in in build of build of core S for our core S. So I will. Def Okay, uh, so let's, uh, we talked a lot. So let's see where we are currently. So uh, we had the preview release uh, on 16th of July, which we announced. And uh, so in this release, uh, what are things are really already available? So yeah, we have x86-64 uh, images building. Uh, and it's, we, ha we are currently having testing stream. Uh, and uh, you can download uh, the artifacts available from getfedora.org uh, slash en slash coreos slash download. So all the available images are there. And once uh, every time we do update, uh, things will be updated on the website. And the new, new artifacts will be automatically be available there in the website. So yeah, do try it from there. Also, in, in this release, uh, we have uh, the bare metal support available. So you can install it on uh, your bare metal uh, in the PXC or using directly ISO. Uh, and the QMU also works for us. And OpenStack images are also there. VMware images are also there. Uh, so you can try on these platforms uh, in from the preview release. And uh, we have uh, also in the cloud provider AWS uh, it's available in the AWS, the AMI is available, so you can try launch something there and try quickly. Also, the no Python on host is there, so we don't have, we were able to remove uh, the Python dependency from the host. Uh, and uh, 
yeah, the automatic uh, update is also in effect. Uh, so if you have like uh, latest version of uh, Fedora Core S pre-release installed on your system, so whenever we do an next release, uh, it will automatically update your system, reboot it, and uh, you will have the latest one. So these all things are already working and in place. Yeah, so uh, let's see some demos so that uh, it's not like I'm just talking here. Okay, um, so uh, what I will do, I will, I will do a quick demo if, with the QCOD2 image because it's easy to launch. And uh, okay, so let's see first. Uh, as, uh, as we talked, uh, we don't write ignition config directly. Uh, we use uh, Fedora Core S config, uh, which is in YAML format, and uh, we write that, and we let FCCT tool to generate the ignition config from there. So I have this uh, uh, FCC config available. Conf okay, so you can see uh, it's just a simple one with the password and uh, the username. This is the solved password. Uh, you, you write it here, and the SSH key, and the, I added it in the wheel group so that I have the pseudo access. Now I have the binary of uh, FCCT tool for the Linux downloaded here. So I will use that to convert it into, into ignition config. Okay. So now we see what we have. Yeah, so it, it basically generates a lot of things since we haven't defined these stuff. So it, it's blank for now. The version is 3.0 ignition. Here we can see the latest one is the 3.0. The password, uh, the section which we added is here. Groups, users, name, password has, SSH key, and storage and system units. We haven't defined it, so it's blank for now, but you can definitely add your own uh, system unit and then other stuff, whatever you want to, however you want to configure your system. So let's run QMU command. Uh, so this is the simple QMU command. Uh, we, we are giving two gigs of uh, RAM of, and um, CPU, and this is the QCO image. This is the latest image which we have the, from the 1st of August. And uh, yeah, the ignition config, you provide it in this way in the QMU. So it's booting. It will be very quick. Yeah. So the username was core, and the password was test. And it's uh, uh, right now. It's everything is getting printed out here. So it's fine. Uh, let's see. The first command which we usually run is rbms status, so that we see where we are. Mm. Okay. So here you can see. Uh, we, uh, we were talking about a lot of streams, so this is what it exactly looks. This is the stream name here, fedora slash x8664 core OS slash testing. So this is the exact name of the ref which we use. And if you see, uh, it's uh, testing, and we are not specifying any fedora version here because it's going to be a rolling release, and it will be always the same testing, which will to receive updates every time. So in case if you've used Atomic Host or uh, Silver Blue, you see that whenever a new release happens uh, based on like Fedora 30, you do RPM OS2 rebase and the new ref. So, and we don't need to do anything here. Also, yeah. Also, yeah, the commit version where we are and uh, the GPG key. Uh, which we signed, and now let's see the Python. So I will do rpm hyphen QA Python. Sorry, yeah, there is no Python. Okay, see no Python, no Python three. Yeah, uh, okay. I think that's pretty much uh, for demo. It's running, and uh, now if you want to run something, you have Podman or uh, Docker available. So do, you can do all the container things from here. Okay, 
And I think Yaku will show the demo for uh, PowerPC. So as the chorus assembler was mentioned, it, uh, for CoreOS it's extremely easy, even if you are not on some more exotic architecture like 64-bit ARM or PowerPC. It's extremely easy to hack on building the OS itself compared to for regular Fedora. So really go there and check out the CoreOS assembler if you want to try to build your own, own Fedora CoreOS. Uh, and based on that, uh, you basically get the assembler, you build the assembler container, and then you run the assembly in the container. Uh, there are a few stages. You you fetch all the configuration information that goes into the build. You fetch the packages, and then you build the build the artifacts. Um, that's what bits that I did here, and I can show you that you currently uh, with the master master branch of both of the config and uh, chorus assembler, you can actually run it on on power. Uh, if we have networking. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, uh, presentation goals are not here, uh, but basically you can, you can, you can run it uh, even on your, uh, you can build and run the images. Uh, if you for whatever reason want to build it and hack it on, it's really easy and really check it out. It's, it's really, really, really cool. And yeah, and there is built functionality to the assembler container that you can run the resulting images, which I would show here, but unfortunately the network is is not here. So yeah, so back to Cine. Okay, that's bad. Internet is really flaky. Yeah, so maybe if you have a PowerPC system, you can go and try it yourself. Yeah, on, on 64, and we, uh, I'd be really happy to hear uh, hear about it, how it went, or we yeah. can try it together, um, yeah. And the community around Fedora Cores is great, so if you used to buy on RSC or other channels, they, are, they will help you with any crazy stuff you are doing. Yeah, so the future plans, uh, so what the upcoming things uh, in Fedora Core OS, so we have a lot of things already in place, but few things we really want to get done, uh, which is like, uh, yeah, the next obvious step is the next and the stable stream. Uh, so right now we have only testing, and the, it's also intentional because it's a preview release, right? So we want people to test, and we want to give them feedback, or file issues or anything. Uh, and we don't want them to uh, run in production, so that's why we don't have stable for now. So uh, we will like to get the next and stable stream soon. Also, uh, we have ISO uh, and PXC booting running, but uh, we want the live ISO PXC as well so that uh, people don't have to really install. They can just try out and uh, see how it goes, and then they can install it whenever they want. Also, support for other cloud providers. There will be a lot of cloud providers, and right now we uh, we are uh, we are on AWS. Uh, so we'd like to go to other Azure, uh, DigitalOcean, or any any uh, anybody else whoever is interesting to want to add Fedora Core S on their cloud. Also, uh, in integration with the Kubernetes distribution and OKD. Uh, things are already in progress uh, for OKD. There are lots of discussion going on. So if you want to really in get involved and get more information, uh, you can follow the OKD mailing list or the IRC channel and see where we are for Fedora Core OS on OKD. Uh, also, support for yeah architectures, different architectures are already in going on. Everyone is so friendly, and people are doing the changes and sending patches. So more uh, more in input here would be really welcome. Also, the toolbox. Uh, so there was a talk about toolbox uh, in another room, uh, I think, a few hours back. And uh, that's really nice. I, I have Fedora Silver Blue system, and I every time use toolbox for anything because, yeah, it's a RPM OST-based immut immutable host. So you really need DNA for anything to do. So you need toolbox. So similarly, on if you want to do some debugging or anything, uh, toolbox is really handy. So we'd like to get the toolbox in place in uh, Fedora Core S as well. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think there is some work needs to be done to get it on Fedora Core S. We want to, I think, remove some dependencies, which is a part of the toolbox so far. And maybe there are a few additional details. Also, documentation. It's very important. Right now, we have this 
uh, new Fedora Core OS, which is like the loss of hell, new things. We don't know, even I don't know lots of things so, still. So uh, lots of documentation, yeah, we have few documentation, but more documentation for each tooling and how you want to use, what all ways we can do, what things can be done. It will be really nice to improve documentation there. Uh, anyone can contribute to the documentation if you're doing something and want to add. It's really everything on GitHub. Also, preview release, uh, we want to continue it for a few months, and then we'd like to uh, get a stable release uh, coming soon so that uh, people can run in, in the production. Yeah, and yeah, that's all the summary of the whole talk. Uh, it's like the Fedora Core OS itself is a minimal OS with uh, focus for the containers. Also, it provides you immutable infrastructure, uh, which we talked like we don't want anything to change on the operating system itself. If you want something to add any, any config, then you change, uh, you change your conf FCC config, and uh, you provision a new host there, and uh, that's how you keep your system without any, any manual changes there. Also, we have uh, multiple streams uh, available in Fedora Core OS, which helps to run things smoothly, test uh, coming features in advance, catch any regression. Uh, so that really helps uh, Fedora Core OS to be a stable operating system focused for containers. Yeah, that's all. And uh, if you want to get involved, these are a few things. I'd recommend first try, do try Fedora Core OS preview from the link, uh, getfedora.org. And uh, if you encounter, encounter any issue, file it on the GitHub Fedora Core OS tracker. Uh, so we have some documentation in place to get started, how you can try out those images. So you can get that. And yeah, we have uh, IRC channel, has hash Fedora, hyphen Core OS, or uh, do join mailing list for more updates. That's all. Uh, thank you. And uh, there is a, an interesting talk from Luca tomorrow at 11 uh, about auto updates design. So he will dive deep in into that. And that, if you are interested in that. Yeah. Thank you too. And let you. us know. Let us know how how the Coras Fedora Coras went for you. Yeah. Went um, for you on your platform of preference, whether it's Intel and or or whatever. <laughs> yeah, through Thank IRC you. channel or discussion or any or or through mailing list or file issue tracker. If you don't say something there, we'll really try to get it in from your support. <laughs> any question? Okay. Who goes first? <laughs> Maybe Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as I know, uh, there is going to be a separate side release for OKD, at least initially, so that uh, people can try. It, it can be maybe the first kind of preview release how we have for Fedora Core OS. So there is a different uh, working group uh, set up for OKD on Fedora Core OS. And once it's uh, like it goes st a bit stable, maybe in future we can have something together in place. I can't talk about that much future, but that's how it's currently it is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Luca, you can take. So we want to run everything as a container, including the cluster management and stuff itself. But the problem is that the agent that Kubernetes uses, which is called the kubelet, uh, is not something that can be containerized easily. Um, and from that on, there are 
a bunch of other requirements that stems from the kubelet, for example, like some specific version of kubelet can be used on some specific version of Kubernetes and only with some specific version of Docker or Cry or whatever, which means that as soon as you fix the version of Kubernetes that you're running, you cannot update the rest of the system independently. And so we have this kind of struggle with, we want to provide a minimal OS which auto-updates to the latest version, the stable, the securest, whatever, but at the same time, if you do that, we are also mandating which version of Kubernetes you are running, uh, which we don't want to do because it's an application and it should be containerized. So there is a bit of like friction that we need to solve in that regard. And OpenShift doesn't have this friction because the kubelet, which is the OpenShift kubelet, and Cryo, they are part of the operating system, and the operating system version is part of the OpenShift product, so it's, everything comes as a single stuff. Thanks. For automation, uh, you mean the host automation or something? Yes. I think Luca will be better too <laughs> for this. Okay, I can take that one as well. You will not like the answer. I can provide three different answers. The first one is like you don't because it's an Im immutable infrastructure. So if you're changing something in the OS, you redeploy it. Uh, that's the first answer. The second answer is, in fact, there were people running Ansible on container Linux in two ways. The first one is like trying to containerize Ansible itself and then bind mount stuff into the container if you're just like touching files. And the other one is like run Ansible but without depending on libraries that are part of the OS, which is in general a better answer because if we update, let's say that you depend on some OpenSSL version and we update OpenSSL for you, uh, then we break Ansible that you are providing because you depends on a different version of OpenSSL. So uh, as soon as you manage to split your application from the OS, you can do whatever you want. Our preferred answer is like you don't and you just redeploy the node because anyway the node could be could go down and be redeployed at any point because AWS decided to kill your node, for example. Thanks again. Sorry, I'm taking a lot of answers, sorry, but it's like, it's, most of this is what we were doing with Container Linux and we just ported it to Fedora Core, so uh, I can give like a bit of historical perspective and like, from our point of view, the server is dumb, it's just providing the ignition configuration and it could be just like whatever HTTP server you want and then the client is applying that on first boot only, which means that you are redeploying the switch from our point of view, which could take like a lot of time if your infrastructure is large, but it's not putting stress on the server itself. It's putting stress on specific portion of your network. And the other kind of like approach that we have is that we define, we, we build our tools so that you can define maintenance window per cluster. And so you can say, for example, when there is an out update, you can say, I want exactly these four nodes to be in the same group for out update and only be rebooting two of them at a time because I want to have some kind of like H HA continuously. And if something goes wrong, we stop the rollout of up updates. So this kind of like approach to you define how you want to manage your updates and stuff. But from the point of view of the, of the, of the infrastructure, like the nodes themselves, they are really cattles. They could disappear at any point and they could be just be redeployed from scratch. Any more question? So the package name is Mobi hyphen engine. It's not Docker. Docker is a different uh, package. 
Mobi have an engine, yeah. I believe there are some. I believe even uh, like VMs and and uh, bare metal hosts, but uh, I have not looked at the direction yet fully. And, and some smaller ones, uh, I, I, like a small one, one or two, but I cannot remember from top of my head. And I believe, of course, IBM. Uh, yeah, so you can see, like, I'm in the system, and uh, if I do which docker, it's say MOB hyphen engine package. Any more question? Okay, thank you guys. Do try Fedora Core OS and let us know how it goes for you. Thank you. Thanks.